Therefore, reaction number 10 would actually produce ATP from ADP. Sorry. ATP from ADP. This phosphate attaches there and the end product is going to be a pyruvate. Now, before I write the structure of pyruvate, I have to tell you that the pyruvate that is produced is going to come in two forms. It's going to come in an inner form and then quickly it's going to isomerize into the keto form. This reaction where it changes from an inner to a keto form is called a totomerization reaction. The reason why I have to tell you this is because I want you to understand the difference in the energy of the reactant and the product so that you understand why this reaction may give you as much as minus 61.9 kilojoules per mole once it proceeds. And also to help you understand why there is no way you will reverse such kind of a reaction. Therefore, as this phosphate comes on, it produces pyruvate, and the pyruvate comes in one, the inner form, H2. This is the inner form of pyruvate, which quickly totomerizes into the keto form. So that's a reaction. However, it favors production of the keto form of pyruvate. And this becomes your predominant form of pyruvate. So these two are both pyruvates. It spontaneously totomerizes into the, the keto form of pyruvate. So this is your end product. I told you that when a molecule isomerizes, it tends to become more stable. Therefore, this molecule you have here is far much more stable than the, end, the molecule that it came from. Which means that the change in free energy between the end product and the reactant becomes a highly negative change. It's the same one that we talked about where we said that this could be likened to a situation where somebody is moving from the top of the building and falling onto from maybe the top of the class like where you are and falling onto the ground. This reaction becomes a highly passive reaction. However, however athletic somebody can be, they can't jump from the ground and come back to the building on top because that is actually going to be inhibiting in terms of the energy that one would require. Therefore, to go back from pyruvate into fossil inner pyruvate is impossible because the change in free energy of this reaction is highly negative. This in the nutshell, guys, is how glucose is going to be broken down in a series of 10 reactions to produce end product pyruvate. That is it in a nutshell. Now, now that we have seen these reactions, I want to tell you a few other things that are important when it comes to a discussion of glycolysis. Because what we are talking about here is considered aerobic glycolysis. Aerobic glycolysis, this is the kind of glycolysis which is going to occur when you have oxygen available. When oxygen is available, this here is how glucose is going to be broken down. And the funny thing here is somebody may overlook the fact that oxidation can occur or reduction can occur in the absence of oxygen. So the question one may ask is that, well, we've been busy talking about this reaction occurring only in the presence of oxygen. Where is the oxygen? 
right? Or how does the oxygen come about? Because there's no oxygen being shown here. Well, this is still going to happen in aerobic glycolysis because the end product here, pyruvate, would take a different direction based on the presence of oxygen. If oxygen is available, this pyruvate will take a certain direction. So, pyruvate will, different, will have different effects. One of the effects of pyruvate in the circumstance where oxygen is available is that this pyruvate, which I should probably now start showing with a different marker, this pyruvate is actually going to be converted into acetal CoA. So, CoA, CH3, this reaction, which we'll come and discuss further, is actually referred to as a bridging reaction. Carbon monoxide comes off, and then there is an oxidation there. And DH plus H plus. This is catalyzed by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Alright? When oxygen is available, pyruvate will be converted into acetal CoA. This is going to happen by the pyruvate being transported into the mitochondria with the help of a pyruvate transporter. Gets in there, then it's going to get a CoA and oxidized in the same process to produce acetal CoA. Then the acetal CoA goes down the TCA cycle to produce NADH and other intermediates and FADH2. Then the FADH2 is the one that will go into the electron transport chain where its hydrogens are going to be given onto oxygen. And that is where the oxygen comes in. So if there is not oxygen available, this reaction would move in another direction. If oxygen is unavailable, the reaction would move in another direction. Or in the same sense, if this reaction is occurring in a cell where there is no mitochondria, for the TCA cycle to produce and the electron transport chain to occur, you discover that this reaction is going to occur in an anaerobic manner. Examples of such cells are the red blood cells. The red blood cells predominantly depend on anaerobic glycolysis. So what happens in the red blood cells is simply that once the pyruvate has been produced, it is going to be converted into lactate. And this is done by a reduction reaction. NADH plus H plus NAD plus. And the end product here is going to be your lactate. This here is lactate. Enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. Now, this is a very interesting reaction. Why? Because this reaction in the red blood cells is necessitated to allow the continuation of energy production. You see, this NADH is actually going to come from here. It is this NADH here which will come and reduce this pyruvate into lactate. Why is this the case? This is the case because, for example, in red blood cells, there is no electron transport chain because there is no mitochondria. So as this reaction proceeds into pyruvate energy is produced, you have NADH. And in the cells, you need to have a higher concentration about 1,000 times more NAD plus than NADH. So if you consume all the NAD plus, the consequence is that this reaction may outbreak the stop because this reaction will not proceed due to absence of NAD+. So to regenerate the NAD+, it has to give these hydrogens onto something, but there is no oxygen. So these hydrogens are going to be given into pyruvate to produce lactate. An interesting sample question that I can ask again is, Explain why, when somebody is running at top speed for 400 meters, they will end up producing 
lactate. The question is not explain how, because explain how is this, but explain why. Give a reason why this should be the case. The answer is particularly the same. It is because when somebody is running at a top speed, they will have an oxygen debt. After having an oxygen debt, you will not have enough oxygen to accept the hydrogens coming from there. But you need to continue producing ATP there and you need to produce ATP there and you also need to continue producing ATP there, right? So because you have to continue producing your ATP, these hydrogens will actually be given onto pyruvate to produce lactate and then the NADH can come and continue this reaction. This is why lactate starts forming. I also want to tell you that a reaction which occurs anaerobically in the absence of oxygen will give you less energy. Why? Because this NADH which was produced there, instead of going into the electron transport chain and producing 2.5 ATP times 2, because it's one coming from there and the other one coming from there, you discover that these NADH are actually going to be given onto pyruvate to produce lactate and to allow the reaction to continue. So this briefly is how glucose is going to be broken down in the presence of oxygen and in the absence of oxygen. And just for you to go and read further, I want you to go and look at what are the other effects of pyruvate different, given the different circumstances. What are the effects of pyruvate given the different circumstances? Finally. Finally, I want to quickly explain to you how glycolysis is regulated. There are many reactions that will involve the regulation of glycolysis and that stuff I want you to go and read further about but I want to explain the more interesting part which most of my students tend to struggle with. How is glycolysis regulated at carbon number 3? Or at reaction number 3? So allow me, if you will, to wrap up all this stuff so that since we have this information so that I can quickly explain this reaction. Is that okay? Yes. Great.